Hello and welcome to Video Game Design 1. In this class, we'll learn to use Unity Game Engine by creating the space shooter game you see now. As a game design student, it's important to learn Unity. It's not only used to create some of the most successful video games out there, but it's being used to build training simulations, smartphone apps, virtual reality applications, and much more. The purpose of taking on this project is to number one, get familiar using Unity, and number two, learn the basics of game development. We'll talk about scripting, game objects, colliders, physics, and game systems. By the end of completing this project, you should have the ability and confidence to develop your own game project in Unity. Additionally, you can use your completed project as a framework to design your own space shooter with all of your own artwork, sound effects, and features. Let's get started. For this first session, we're gonna focus on the ship mechanics. We're gonna write some code to make the ship fly, follow your mouse, shoot, and we'll be able to use that code for both the player ship and the enemy ships. Okay, let's start by opening up Unity Hub. Unity Hub is the management tool that allows you to manage different projects and versions of Unity. So I'm going to be using Unity 2021.1.25 F1 for this project. Um, you can use whatever version you like. If you're in a class, I'd recommend all using the same version. Um, for this particular project, I'm going to use this one. And we're going to start a new project. If you don't have Unity Hub, you can download that from unity.com slash download. Okay, so we're gonna create a new project. And we're going to use the 2D template. So you can build any sort of game within Unity, 2D, 3D, AR, VR. For this, it's going to be a top-down shooter. So we can simply use a 2D template. And I'm just gonna call this uh, Space Shooter. I'm going to put this on my desktop. Okay, and we'll create the project. This will take a few minutes, maybe a little bit less, but it's going to build all the essential libraries and everything you need for a Unity project. All right, Unity is finally opened, and you should be seeing this. We have a few different tabs we need to concern ourselves with. We have our hierarchy, which is essentially just a list view of everything that's in your scene. And you'll see this populate once we start adding some game objects. Next to that, we have our scene view and our game view. Our scene view is where we can add game objects, we can position things, scale them, and manipulate our game. Our game view is simply how our game will look when we press play. Right now, we have nothing in our game, so there's nothing in the game view. Um, if you click anything in the hierarchy, on the far right, you'll see the inspector. The inspector breaks down everything that's in that object. So right now we just have a camera, and inside of that we have a camera component. Once we start creating our own game objects, you'll see our own components for our own game objects. For example, we'll create a ship object, and that will have a ship component. It'll have something called a rigid body, which will give it physics. It'll have a collider, which will allow it to collide with things. So the inspector is very important. You'll be doing a lot of work in here. Additionally, we have two other tabs here. We have our project tab, which is essentially just a file structure for your project. And then our console tab. So here you can see any debug information. If there's any errors going on, you'll see them here. So if you see anything that's red in the console, it's important to address that error and um, before you proceed with developing your game. So you gotta fix any bug uh, that pops up here. Okay, let's start by creating some folders so we can have an organized project from the start. So we have a scenes folder. Um, your scene folder contains the one scene that's open right now, which is just empty. Uh, your scene you can think about as a level. So you can have a scene for a, a main menu. You could have a scene for level one, level two, level three. And we're going to use this to hold everything that's in our gameplay level as of right now. So additionally, bes besides the scenes folder, let's create a few more folders. Um, so we can right click in some empty space here. Once you're in assets, create folder and the first one we're going to call code we could create another one called images create another one called prefabs and we can create another one called audio
Okay, so the first thing we want to do is be able to see our ship. As of right now, we have no images or sprites in our project, so we need to create some. I'm going to create something really simple, um, just a square and a triangle that we can use for our projectile and our ship sprites. So you can use whatever image editor you'd like. I really like to use paint.net for simple things. Paint.net is a very simple yet powerful image creation tool. So I'm going to click new and I'm going to make these sprites 128 by 128. So the first one will just be a white square. I can do file save as and I'm going to just put these on my desktop. Call this white square. And then one more. 128 pixels by 128 pixels. And this will be a little bit more in depth. I'm going to go to my tools tab, click the rectangle select, and drag over everything so I can just delete that square. Now we just have a transparent background. And next, I want to create a triangle. So to do that, we're going to go back to the tools tab, click shapes, switch this from rectangle to this triangle right here. I'm going to change it from drawing an outline to instead drawing a filled shape. And then I'm going to change my color from black to white. Okay, and now I'm going to hold down shift while I click and drag my ship. So we should see our triangle and I'm going to stretch this to the very outer edges as much as I can. And also I'm going to move this up so that the ship is somewhat into the center. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to be a placeholder for our ship until you guys uh, create your own art for your own space shooter game. But right now it's pretty simple just to use a triangle just to get things working. Okay, I'm going to hit enter and then finally file save as and in my desktop still I'll just call this white triangle. Okay, we'll save those. And what's nice about Unity's project structure is that it behaves like any file structure on your computer. So if you have Unity open and you open up a file explorer, you can just simply find your sprites. So I have white square and white triangle. I'm going to click this one, shift click the next one. So I've selected both and simply drag these into my images folder. Perfect. And now if you drag your white triangle into your hierarchy, you can now see that you have a white triangle inside your scene. If you go to your game view, you can also see that triangle. So now we can see our ship and next is to make that ship actually function. If you hit play, nothing's going to happen. It's just a, it's just a sprite. There's nothing that gives it any logic or behaviors at all. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, next up, we're going to give our ship some components. So if you see, we have two objects in our hierarchy. We have our camera, which is rendering the ship right now in the background. And then we have our white triangle, which will be our ship. So first, why don't we select white triangle from the hierarchy. And instead of naming this white triangle, let's just call this player ship. Good. And then hit enter to save that. So like I said, we're going to add some new components to this. The first one we're going to add is going to be the rigid body. So rigid body 2D. Make sure you choose rigid body 2D and not rigid body. The rigid body 2D variant works better with 2D games, which is what our game is. So we can click this. And now if you click play, you'll see that your ship just falls. And that's because it has a rigid body. Now you don't have to do this, but I'll show you what it's like without it. If I remove the rigid body and I click play, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't have any physics. So I'm going to undo that so my rigid body's back. The rigid body essentially gives your object the ability to have mass, drag, gravity, and those sort of physics. However, um, Unity thinks that our game is a, a side scroller as of right now. So gravity is downward um, on the y scale, on the y axis. But really, we're facing. Um, the ship from a bird's eye view so we don't really want that gravity scale so we can simply just change this gravity scale from 1 to 0 and 
nothing will happen again, but we're going to use this rigid body later on to give our ship some, some cool spaceship mechanics. Okay, moving forward. Next, let's add a, a collision, um, a circle collider, so that when it hits other ships or when a projectile hits it, we know what to do. So if you type in collider, you'll see we have all these different colliders we can choose from. For right now, we're just gonna choose Circle Collider 2D. It doesn't quite match the <laughs> aesthetics of the ship, but this is something we can change on later on if we'd like. And you can't see anything right now if you're in the game view. But if you go to your scene view, remember your scene view allows you to manipulate your game um, and kind of see more details about each of your game objects. Right now we have this big uh, green outline in the shape of a circle attached to our ship. This is the circle collider right here. And it's a little bit too big in my opinion right now. So pro tip within Unity, if you have some sort of numeric value in your inspector, you can simply click the name of that value and drag it to the left or right to increase or decrease the value. So I'm gonna decrease this until it's around the same, it fits within the, the triangle. So 0.39 looks good. And then I'm going to change the offset from zero, same, same method, to about 0.17. So I'll keep that as it is for now, and we can change this later on if we'd like. Okay, moving forward, I'm gonna go back to my game view, and we wanna add one more component to this. We wanna add a ship component. But we don't have that yet. We, that's, that's where us game developers come in. Um, so Unity handles things that are very reusable among many game objects. A lot of objects, for example, have a sprite, have physics or rigid body, and have colliders. But the things that are specific to those objects, like ship, um, that's something that we need to create. So the way we do that is through scripting or through code. So let's go to our code folder and we'll create our first script. We're going to create a script called ship. So if you right click in some empty space here, you can go to create C sharp script. And we're simply going to name this ship. And also we're going to be smart about how we write our code. There's going to be the player ship and enemy ships. So if we can write the ship class once so that it can be reused for both the player ship and the enemy ship classes, we can do that. So our, our ship class is going to hold all the code that's universal among every ship in the game. So it might have things like um, the ability to shoot, the ability to fly, the ability to thrust. Um, and then our specific classes for the player ship and the enemy ship can hold the code that's unique to those particular ships. So that will make more sense as we get farther down the line. So next, let's right click in some empty space again. We'll go to create, and then another C sharp script, and we're going to name this player ship. Great. Give that some time. Okay, so if we go back to player ship now in our hierarchy, if you now click add component, you should be able to see player ship or ship, but we're gonna add player ship to this object. So if I click enter, we see we now have the player ship script associated to our object, but it's not going to do anything. We haven't written any code for this yet. And that's what we're gonna do next. Before we do that, I wanna check something really quick. Um, if you can, please go to edit, preferences. If you're on a Mac, it might be Unity preferences. And then we're going to go to external tools and we want to make sure that external script editor is set to Microsoft Visual Studio, some version of that. If it's set to open by file extension, we don't want that, that's bad. We want to point it to Visual Studio. And the reason is because once you establish that connection, Visual Studio and Unity talk together, um, talk with each other much more effectively. It's gonna help autocorrect things, autofill. It's gonna use something called IntelliSense. It's gonna make your life a lot easier going forward. So just to make sure that external tools, Microsoft Visual Studio is selected. And once you have that checked, we are good. Okay, so we can exit that. And then let's go ahead and click, double click our ship script. 
So if we double click this, it's going to open up Visual Studio. And voila, we have our first class. So a few things I want to discuss. Um, you, if you've taken the previous class, you might know a few of these already. But three terms I want to go over. Um, we have the name of our class, which is right here, public class ship. And you can think of a class as a blueprint for an object. So your class encompasses all the states and behaviors that make up a particular object. Um, we can also have variables and methods in our class. Our methods are the behaviors that a class has. So for our ship, it might have a method or a behavior called um, fly or thrust. It might have another method called fire projectile. So two methods you see right away. Um, one is called the start method and the other the update method. The start method, this will execute whatever code is in here as soon as you press play. So it's really good for anything that you have to initialize at the beginning of a game. Um, and then the update method, this will execute whatever code is in here every single frame that your game runs. So it's really good for moving things across the screen or checking for user input because it has to do that consecutively during the session of your gameplay. And before I write any code, I like to just map out everything that consists of a certain object before I start writing any code. Um, I like to call this object mapping. So if we think about our ship um, and every object, every object in game development has things and it does things. So if we list these out, um, the does column is much easier. What does a ship do? A ship um, flies, but we're gonna call this thrust. It's kind of more spaceship appropriate. It fires a projectile, so we'll call this fire projectile. It takes damage. And it explodes. Those are things a ship does. So has, what kind of things does a ship have? Um, we can think statistics and objects. So what objects does a ship have? Well, we added a few already. One was a rigid body, so we can say uh, rigid body. Remember, the rigid body is what allows it to have physics, gravity, mass, drag, etc. Um, so a ship is also going to have a projectile that it shoots. So we can say projectile. It needs a reference point to spawn the projectile. So where does the projectile spawn? So we could say projectile spawn point. Um, what else does it have? So in terms of statistics, a ship has things like acceleration, a maximum speed, maximum armor. Maybe you want it to have four health or five health and you can adjust that via code. It would have a fire rate. So maybe if we don't specify that, it would just shoot infinitely. A projectile speed. So how fast does it shoot the projectile? And then some other things we'll need to consider um, when we're calculating speed. We're going to have a current speed and a current armor. So it's easier for you as a game developer to kind of map out everything that consists of an object. And once you do that, you can stub out the class in C Sharp and then piece on the missing functionality. So now that we know what makes up a ship, let's start stubbing out our code. Okay, so at the top of our class, we're going to declare all of our variables. First one's going to be our rigid body. And we could just call this rigid body 2D. So to recap, we're making this variable public. It is of type rigid body, and we are simply giving it the name rigid body with a lowercase r. Okay, let's make a public game object projectile prefab. A public transform of, and we'll call this projectile spawn point. So we haven't covered transform yet, but transform is the type of an object that consists of the object's position, scale, and rotation. In other words, how it exists physically in the game world space. Okay, next up, 
let's create our public float acceleration. So we're declaring a public variable of type float. Remember, float is just a number that allows decimal places. And we're giving it the name acceleration. OK, moving forward, we'll declare public float max speed public int max armor. And I want this to be an integer. So integers are whole numbers um, because that's the way it'll work with the armor system. So you can have either 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 health as opposed to 0 0.5 health and 6.7 health, something like that. I found it just to be easier to use integers for this. OK, going forward, we'll have our public float fire rate public float projectile speed public float current speed public int current armor okay we've declared all our variables so moving forward we're actually going to get rid of our start method we don't need it for this class but we may need it for other classes and you know what we're going to delete the update method too because we're going to replace that with something else. So if we take a look at our object mapping, what does the ship do? It thrusts, fires projectiles, takes damage, and explodes. So everything we created so far has been a variable, the things that the ship has. And now we're going to create methods. So the first method, what I say it was? Thrust. Okay, so we can create a method called thrust. So we're going to type public void thrust and to make this a method we're going to add open close parentheses and then open close curly brackets okay so next up we're going to create the, the remaining three we'll type public void fire projectile parentheses curly brackets public void take damage and one more public void explode okay so now we've stubbed out our whole class we know what the ship has what it does and now we just need to piece on the functionality okay so now we've stubbed out our ship class and we're gonna have two types of ships in this game our player ship and our enemy ship. And those ships are going to have their own classes and they're going to inherit the properties from this class. So everything that makes up a ship will be held in the ship class and then what's unique about the player ship for example will be held within that class. So let's go back to Unity and you can either just switch tabs on your taskbar or what I like to do is just alt tab. So I'm going to alt tab back to Unity it's going to compile your code. It's going to do this every time you save your code. Um, so speaking of saving your code, this does not autosave. Anything in Visual Studio or Unity does not autosave. So always do Control S anytime you write a piece of code or anytime you do anything inside of Unity. If you have any errors in your code, it's going to tell you in your console. So if you have any red down here, you would need to double click that. Um, and it'll bring you to the line of code that's giving you any issues. But right now, we don't have any, so we can proceed. Okay, next, let's open up our player ship class. So just so we can get something working right away, we're going to have our player ship thrust when we click a mouse button. So I'm going to first get rid of our start method. We don't need that for this class. And like I mentioned earlier, our player ship is going to inherit the functionality from our ship class. So this is the way we can inherit code. Um, and instead of inheriting from model behavior, model behavior is just the Unity object, we can simply inherit from ship. And now we have access to anything that's public inside of the ship class. So now our player ship can thrust, and it can fire projectiles, etc. So going back here, we are going to let's let's talk about what makes the player ship unique. 
um, as opposed to an enemy ship. So something the player ship does is that it follows your mouse, it will handle input from the user. So let's declare that all under one method. We'll create this method called void handle input. And here we can see if the user is pressing a particular button on their mouse or keyboard. And if it's the correct button, we can thrust or start flying, for example. So let's check to see if the user is pressing the right mouse button. OK, so we'll say if input dot get mouse button, be sure to get mouse button and not get mouse button down. And inside of here, we're going to pass in one. So this will be checking to see if the right mouse button was clicked. And then curly brackets. And here, like I mentioned, thrust from the ship class is now accessible. We can write thrust, and we will call that method. So if we're hitting the right mouse button, we're going to thrust. OK, so remember we said in your update method, that's a good place to check to see if input is being, um, if anybody's, for example, clicking the keyboard. We need to check that every frame that the game is running. So here we can simply check for input in our update method. And let's go back to ship, because right now thrust isn't doing anything. It's just an empty method. So you can navigate between your classes via the tabs up here. And for thrust, remember our rigid body handles the, the physics behind our object. So we can type in rigid body 2D dot add force. And we're simply going to move upward. So we'll say transform dot up. And we're going to multiply this by our acceleration. Our acceleration is declared here. So if we give this a value, theoretically this should work when we click the right mouse button. So let's do file save. If you want to be safe, you could do control shift S to save every class or click this little icon right here. Okay, so we're going to go back to Unity. Let's go to player ship. And now, don't click play yet because nothing's going to happen. But if you click player ship in your hierarchy, you scroll to the bottom, you'll see there's now empty fields for every variable that we created in our class. So we can drag in rigid body to where it says rigid body. We don't yet have a projectile prefab or a spawn point, so we can leave those. We need something for acceleration, so let's do 10 for now. Uh, max speed, you know what, we don't really need any of these quite yet, so let's just do acceleration. Okay, let's try clicking play. And let's hold down the right mouse button. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> so. We do have something moving on a screen, congratulations. But now we need to make it follow the mouse, we need to make it slow down, lots to do still. But we know our code is working, so let's go back into our code and finish the rest. Okay, let's go back to our player ship class. And if you remember from the video earlier on, you notice that the ship is always following the mouse. So that's another behavior that the player ship has. It simply follows the mouse. So let's create a method for that. We'll type in void follow mouse. And I'm going to write a bunch of code. And then I'll explain what that's doing after I've written it. All right, so feel free to pause the video and type this code. So what we're doing here is first, we're just declaring a vector three called mouse position. And a vector three is simply a variable that stores three numeric values. Generally, it's an X, Y, and Z value. So if you can think about a position on a screen, you have an X going left and right, a Y going up and down, and then a Z value, which is the depth. Generally in 2D games, you don't have depth. So really you just need to concern yourself with the X and Y values. And we're assigning this the value of wherever a mouse is on our screen using this camera.main screen to world point method. So this is a reserved method within Unity. Um, this is something you kind of learn from just searching online. You know, how do you find out where your mouse is on the screen? And you can find out almost anything using Google and Stack Overflow, YouTube, um, to find out information like this. 
So next part, we just need to declare a vector two. We'll call this direction to face, and we're going to simply su subtract our, our mouse position by the position of the ship, and that way we'll know which direction to face. We then declare that up is whatever direction to face is assigned to. And then we can use that to make the ship thrust in that direction. Okay, so next up, we're simply going to call follow mouse in our update loop. So let's save that, control S. We'll go back to Unity, and let's see if that works. Okay, so it looks like it's following my mouse, and if I do right click, oh man, it's, it's a fast ship, and it's not slowing down. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to go a little bit slower so we can demonstrate. But great, my ship is indeed moving. It's following my mouse. So a few, a few more things we wanna do. We wanna cap out the speed so that it can't just go infinitely faster and faster. It's gonna eventually get to a maximum speed and not be able to go faster than that. Additionally, it just keeps floating forever and ever, which theoretically is how it would work in space. But for the sake of gameplay and gameplay feel, we're gonna have the ship slow down as you let go of the mouse. All right, so the first one's easy. Let's make the ship slow down whenever we let go of the mouse. For this, we don't have to write any code. This can be handled within the rigid body. And you'll notice that there are two variables for drag, and we're gonna bump those both up to one. So that way there's some friction. Um, there would be no friction in space, but like I said, this will make our game just feel a little bit better. Okay, so now if I click and I let go, eventually it slows down. So I feel like I have a lot more control of my ship now. Okay, so next up, we're going to make it so that that ship doesn't keep getting faster and faster. Eventually it's going to have a, uh, a maximum speed that it can't surpass. So let's go back to our ship code. And we want to put this in our ship code and not our player ship code is because our... Our enemy ships need the same functionality. We don't want the enemy ships to get faster and faster as time goes on. You notice I deleted the update method from the ship class, and that is because instead we want to use the fixed update method. So the difference between update and fixed update is that fixed update runs the same amount of frames per second no matter your device's processing power. So the problem with update without fixed is you might have a computer that runs 300 frames per second and another computer that runs 20 frames per second. And if you put everything in the update method, um, that game is going to run totally different on both computers. So for fixed update, that ensures that it runs the exact same no matter what the device, um, what the device's processing power looks like. So for moving things across the screen and things with speed and acceleration, Generally, you want to put that into a fixed update. Okay, so here we're going to do a simple calculation. We're going to check the rigid body's vol current velocity. So we can say if the rigid body dot velocity dot magnitude is greater than the max speed. So if we've surpassed the max speed, we're simply going to set our velocity to the max speed. So if you think about it this way, if our max speed is five, and we go up to 5.1, it's simply just gonna bring that back down to five. So we can say rigidbody.velocity equals rigidbody.2d.velocity normalized times max speed. So essentially this is getting the direction of our velocity and it's returning it with a magnitude of one and then we're simply multiplying that by our max speed. So like I said, if we surpass our max speed, for example, it could be five, it's now at a speed of 5.1, it's simply just gonna bring that back down to five. Okay, let's save that. Let's go back to Unity. So I'm gonna Alt Tab. And now we need to actually set a max speed. Okay. So let's actually use five. Max speed will be five. And I'm gonna bump, I'm gonna bring down my acceleration to, to three. 
So let's save that and press play. Okay, cool. So it is capping out at a particular max speed. Another cool thing about Unity is when you're in play mode, you can adjust your variables here and test them out. But the thing to remember is that if you change any variables here during runtime, they will not save. Um, so for example, if I press play to get out of play mode, you see it goes back to five. But if I change it outside of play mode, it will save. So just remember that going forward, if you wanna make some permanent changes to your variables, make sure you do that outside of play mode. All right, so I've got an acceleration of three and a max speed of nine. As of right now, I think this feels pretty good, but as the game designer, you're welcome to change those to whatever you'd like. Actually, four and nine feel a little bit better to me. Okay, cool, so we've got a ship. It follows our mouse, it accelerates, it caps out at a max speed, and now all we have to do for the ship um, fundamentals is to give it the ability to shoot projectiles. So we'll do that next. Okay, so next up we're going to create the object for the projectile that the player ship will shoot. So, let's go to our images and we're going to bring in our white square. And we're going to manipulate this until it looks more like a projectile. So, I'm going to go to the transform and remember your transform uh, encompasses the position, rotation, and scale of your object. So how it exists in the game space. And I'm going to make this smaller. So the scale I'm going to adjust Maybe X is 0.1 and the Y scale is 0.3. That looks good for now. And maybe we can make this look more like a projectile. Let's give it something more aggressive for the color. So maybe like an orange looks good. And also this is going to need a collider so that when it hits another ship, we can do something with that. So ah, let's also name this projectile instead of white square. And let's give this a box collider. Box collider 2D. That part's important, make sure it is the 2D variant. And we're going to make this a trigger instead of a collider. And this is pretty important. You won't get to see um, the effect this has as of right now. But if you don't check this, your collider will actually collide with other colliders. Um, and what I mean by that is if your collider hits another collider, it's going to stop. It's going to get hit. If it's a trigger, it'll just pass right through. But we can still use that um, to say, hey, this trigger zone entered another trigger zone. Let's execute some code when that happens. And that's what we want to do with this projectile. So we're going to check is trigger to true. And we're also going to give this a rigid body so that we can add velocity to it. So rigid body 2D. That part's important. And we're also going to take off gravity. So change gravity scale from one to zero. Okay, next, this part is pretty important. So we're gonna make this projectile a prefab. So you can think of your prefab as a blueprint um, for an object, similar to like a class, but we can use this to kind of create um, copies of objects over and over again by making them a prefab. So to make this object a prefab, and prefab stands for prefabrication, you can simply drag your object from your hierarchy into any folder, but we're going to drag this into the prefabs folder. And you'll see that it turned blue right here. That, um, that lets us know that this object is now a prefab, and we can delete it from our hierarchy because we have a copy of it in our folder here. So if we ever wanna make any changes to this now, we can simply find this in our folder double click it, and then change it here. Okay, so if we go back to our player ship, we can now give it a projectile prefab by dragging the projectile right here. All right, so we also need a projectile spawn point. Let's do that next, and I'm gonna navigate back to my scene view and I'm going to create a child object within my player ship. So if I right click my player ship, I can do create empty, and we're going to name this projectile spawn point. Okay. 
So if I start dragging the Y position upward, you'll see that little circle right here. And what I want to do is put this right at the tip of my triangle. It's a little bit off center, but we can, we can fix that. Okay, so I'm going to have this projectile spawn point be right at the tip of my ship. And then I'm going to go back to my player ship and assign that reference and tell the ship, hey, here is my projectile spawn point. So I simply drag that in there. And now we need to write some code. Okay, so next we're going to create the ability for ships to fire a projectile. So enemy ships can do this and player ships can do this. So this will be part of the ship class and not just the player ship class. So let's go back into our ship class and let's find our fire projectile method, which is just empty right now. And we're going to make this work. So first let's declare a game object. We'll call this projectile. And we're going to assign this the, the value of our prefab that we now instantiate right here. So we're going to write instantiate and we're going to instantiate a copy of our projectile prefab. If you hover over instantiate, you'll notice that, and you can do this with any method within Unity, you can hover over it to see what type of information it accepts. So you'll see that first we need to pass in the object to copy, next the position of where to place the object, and then the rotation. So I'm just going to first pass in the object we want to copy, Next, the position, so we have that um, under our projectile spawn point. And then we can simply give it a rotation, whatever rotation we currently have. Okay, next up, we're going to get the projectile's rigid body. So we can do projectile.get component rigid body 2D, not rigid body. We can add force in the upward direction. So we can say pass, here, pass in right here, transform.up. And then we can multiply this by our projectile speed. Lastly, something that we want to be cognizant of in any game that we create is that after an object has been used um, and we no longer need it, we eventually want to destroy it. And if you think about your ship shooting multiple projectiles. Let's say we shoot 100 projectiles and they're just going off into space um, in every direction forever and ever. So you're gonna have 100 projectiles eventually um, way from the center of the screen. That's gonna bog down your computer or whatever device is running your game. So you wanna get rid of any objects that aren't being used. And we can do that by saying destroy and then pass in the object we want to destroy and then the amount of seconds after it's instantiated to destroy it. So we'll just say four seconds after we create the projectile, let's destroy it. Okay, so let's go to our player ship. Let's control S, we can save that. Fire projectile method should be complete. If we go to player ship, um, let's say the right mouse button makes it thrust and the left mouse button can make it shoot the projectile. So I'm going to copy this, change this from 1 to 0. So 0 is your left mouse, 1 is your right mouse. And we're going to change this to fire projectile. OK, let's save that. Tab, tab back to Unity. Make sure we don't have any errors. And let's test it out. Okay, so it is spawning the projectiles, but, and it's destroying them, great. They're not moving. And what we forgot to do, what I forgot to do, is give our ship a projectile speed. So let's play around with that. Let's try out 100 for now. Okay, still pretty slow, maybe 1,000. Ah, we did one more thing wrong. <laughs> so this is pretty fun. You can use, you can keep your game like this, but what I want is that, so when you click it once, it shoots one projectile. 
So, 1,000 seems good. I'm going to change my projectile speed to 1,000. Uh, but I'm going to go back to my code, and instead of saying get mouse button, we're going to say get mouse button down. And this will return true as soon as you click your mouse button. And that's it. If you hold it down, it's going to stop returning true. So what this will do is I click it once, it's going to shoot one projectile, regardless of whether I hold it or not. So I'm going to save that. We'll go back to Unity. Okay, much better. All right, so the ship follows my mouse, it thrusts, it caps out on max speed, it instantiates our projectile, it applies force to them, and we've created all the framework we need for our player ship and our enemy ships going forward.